So a production function is a math equation that links inputs and outputs. It could be something like for every, you know, take the amount of labor you have, multiply it by three, add the amount of capital, and that's how much output you're going to have. That's just an equation that links inputs to outputs. They could be a lot more complicated than that too. Okay. But in general, as I said before, they're going to look something like a function of capital and labor that generates an output. Now the challenge here is we've got three different variables. We've got two inputs, capital and labor, and we've got one output. So that means if I'm going to do a simple graph with two axes that I can draw on a whiteboard, you're not going to be able to see it. Okay, like I can't draw in three dimensions very easily, or it's not that intuitive if you can. So to begin with, let's just focus on two of these. What we're going to do is we're going to assume that uh, capital for now is just fixed. We're using all 50 robots at this, and so this thing is equal to 50 times the amount of labor is equal to Q. And we can see what happens to the amount of output that we get when we change labor down there. What, how does that affect Q? Okay, and suppose it looks like this, all right? So if you have no labor, the machines are useless, okay? There's no one to drive them, no one to tell them what to do, and so you get zero output. And let's make this even more concrete. Let's say that this is not just some output. Let's say that we're growing food, okay? So I'll have F for food, okay? And what this is saying is that as you add more labor, you get more and more food, okay? And what's interesting, I think it's interesting, is that this thing has a little curve to it, okay? That means that, you know, if we add one more unit of labor, for example, the amount of food goes up to here, and we could imagine that this is 20, 20 uh, bushels or something, okay? We add a second labor, laborer, and the amount of food in this production function doesn't go up to 40, it's not doubled, even though we have twice the labor. Instead, it goes to, let's say this is 30. Okay, and if we go even further, if we add a third worker, the increase that that third worker brings about is even smaller. We could say this is like 35, okay? I'm just making this stuff up. But the point is that as we add each additional worker, the amount of extra output we get, the amount of extra food is not constant, okay? And one of the key uh, properties of a production function is the derivative of the function with respect to labor. So the partial derivative, because we have two inputs, with respect to labor. That tells us if you change the labor a little bit, how much extra output do you get, okay? And it can change, as we've seen here, depending on where you are. If you have zero laborers, adding one additional one gets you another 20 units of food. If you already have one, adding one doesn't get you another 20, now it only gets you an extra 10, okay? And so this derivative with respect to labor has a special name that you need to know because we use it a lot in this course. It's called the marginal product of labor. Okay? The marginal product of labor. And that word marginal comes up a lot in economics. It means kind of like at the margin, you know, like a small amount. So if we're making a small change in labor, what's the small change or large change in output that that results in, okay? It's the uh, derivative, if you've forgotten that, of the production function, which is this guy here. Production function with respect to labor. Okay. Just as you can do this with labor, you can do the same thing with capital, okay? So if I wanna just flip all my stuff around, I can say, let's assume that we're using all 100 colonists to grow food, and we'll make a chart about how capital affects the quantity of food. And maybe it looks exactly the same, maybe it's got a little bit different shape like this, okay? It's just a slightly different curve. In this case, having zero capital, just as how I drew it, it says that you know you have zero output. The guys need tools to work with or they're incapable of producing food. If we give them one robot or one unit of capital, the amount of food they can produce jumps way all the way up to like you know 
Let's say that's 30. If we give them a second unit, so maybe we gave them a like a tractor, and that was the really that was the big thing they needed. Uh, it goes up to 40, and so on. Okay, and just like we had this derivative with respect to labor, we can take a derivative, the partial derivative, with respect to capital, and define something called the marginal product of capital. Okay, and like the other one, it's the derivative with respect to capital in this case instead of labor okay and uh, we're gonna use these a lot remember the key idea is that these marginal products tell you how much extra output you get when you add a little bit more capital or labor they're always tend gonna tend to be zero or positive they're not gonna be negative usually like if you add more labor you usually don't get less and that's could be the case, but usually we don't think of it being that way. Uh, but how they change over time and how they relate to each other will be something that we, we study a lot in this course, and we study how those assumptions affect economic decisions.